you guys what's happening. So, I got another 3D printer to fix. Yeah, I don't typically film all my 3D printer repairs just because it's just redundant, doing the same thing over and over again, but um, this is a Prusa, and I've never seen this enclosure before. So this came in last night, and the issue was he just wanted me to like, go through the hot end. I guess it got melted or something. Like he, I'm not sure. Maybe it was, maybe the nozzle wasn't torqued down correctly. The, you know, the heater block, but if something was. Um, it was it, uh, this from what I sound like the filament came back around. And that's usually when the uh, nozzle's not torqued down correctly. And then it melted into the plastic of the hot end, so or the whole extruder system. So I have to go through it and uh, I guess rebuild it, but it's gonna be kind of a headache with this enclosure. So I don't know if it's gonna be easier just to take it out of the enclosure. Or if I can reach around and get it. But uh, cool cool uh, I mean that's cool. I mean I mean it's not a heat enclosure obviously. You might be able to put stuff in there, but you know there's like maybe like a back fan for back there maybe. Here's a um, about it with a lead on obviously the sensor has been melted off. Um and let's see down over here. So it runs a V6 hot end, E3D V6 hot end. Yeah, this thing's pretty jacked. So sometimes these are kind of a headache to take apart. The the whole extruder system. Yeah, look how melted it got. Jeez. Um. Yeah, and actually, he ordered the real official like replacement stuff from Prusa. Um. One of the issues with the Prusa printers, right? I mean, the quality is super low of the 3D prints. But they're running PETG, so which is not, it's harder to print to than let's say PLA plus, but I mean, if they could do this in carbon fiber PLA, I mean, that would be ideal, but yeah, you just, you, they don't, you know, it's pretty, it looks like it's probably 0.2 layer height or more, I don't know, but the quality is not very great, their prints. But regardless of what producer it is, all producers are like that. The quality, the components aren't usually very high quality. Well, at least, I mean, they could actually, you know, make it a lot better, higher resolution. Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do this inside this enclosure. Well, I know if the power supply is external. Um, yeah, this one might be kind of a headache to get this thing out of here. So the main power feed. So I, mean, I don't think there's gonna be a quick disconnect. So I don't know if I'm gonna get this out of there, at least easily. You know, because it actually feeds the front up here. So there have to be a disconnect down here somewhere. All right, I guess I'll try to do it inside the machine. I don't know. Ah, I think it's hard to get to, though. Yeah, it's a close look at it. Yeah, it's a big gooey mess. So maybe I'll have to heat it up and kind of see if I can get some of that stuff off there. But this is kind of why you want to use a sock. Um, it just, you know, it protects the stuff around it, the plastic around it. Plus, it actually, well, I mean, it keep, this supposedly also keeps it heated, a little bit more stable inside the, the heater block, but... I don't know much that makes a difference. I think it's really just to keep the stuff around it, not to me. Hopefully those wires are okay. Wow. I got really hot. Jeez. Oh, yeah, this is like total hot and destruction. Look at that. Yeah, this is a major headache. Um, yeah, I hate how they use the zip ties on there. That's so annoying. That's what they did 20 years ago. Um, not 20 years ago, like 10 years ago, whatever. When I first started out, that's why you use a zip time on there. Linear, linear bearings. Man, this is a very high drama extruder system. Let me show you the one I came up with. You want a low drama extruder system? So that's easy to take out when you have a problem. This is called the Orca. I designed this uh, probably a few months ago. All easy to take apart. You have a jam. Three screws, the whole thing comes out. Super low drama. Well, one of the things that adds to the drama is the fact that there's no belt tension mechanism. I mean, there's a couple screws on the motor, but not enough to get that thing back on the actual uh, the carriage here. So it's like, man, it's like everything. They're even using square bolts and stuff, square nuts. God, I mean, how much more difficult can you make it? Totally unnecessary. Yeah, I'm actually, this is making me sort of frustrated. I mean, I'm getting it going, but it's, you know, I fixed hundreds of 3D printers, all different manufacturers, and this is annoying. This is, this doesn't have to be this complicated. And I, I get a lot of hate mail, too, like when I talk shit on, uh, or talk stuff on uh, 
Prusa. And I mean, it doesn't have to be this complicated. I mean, this is extreme. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've worked on their minis. I've worked on this one, you know. Um, yeah, this is like, I mean, I'm the one that's being paid to fix it. So, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can tell you from personal experience, I've fixed many, 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 many 3D printers. And this is definitely annoying. Man, why use these square nuts? Like, literally, I'm at the, I, now it sounds like I'm complaining a lot, but it's like, I'm at the start charge next to a mighty, these Prusas, because it's, it's not complex like it's, just, it's just unnecessary. All right, so I'm just, I already moved some stuff over, but I'm, I gotta move this stuff over to this new one. Um, yeah, so typical, like, uh, I guess, I mean, I know I sound really fresh, but they're, they're, the printers are cool. I'm not, I mean, but the amount of time, extra time I have to do dealing with this, whereas I had to be done if I was working on a Creality printer. It took me less than an hour. I've already got hours into this. Uh, maybe an hour and a half so far, but, you know? It's like, man, this things like this, like, man, it's like, everything, like, a lot of this stuff is proprietary. You can't, I can't go like, I mean, maybe I can find it on Amazon, the square nuts, but, um, yeah, I gotta move this whole section over. I mean, come on, man, there's a ball in there too? Jesus. Magnetic. Yeah, I mean, this definitely some cool things like that, little opto sensor right there, but, Overall, I have a lot of time so far in this thing. All right, so I'm gonna some mark that so I know where to kind of go. Um, I mean, you have to redo the offset anyways because we're talking tenths of a millimeter, so. Um, yeah, it's impossible to make it the same. All right, so I'm gonna preheat that nozzle and uh, see if I can get some of that junk off there. It needs a, it really needs a sock. Right, so see how that all that plastic's in between the actual uh, cooling fin and the heater block? See how that's kind of loose? The filament is actually going over the top of it between the threads, coming back out. So I have to, that's, I think that's the original problem. I have to solve. Yeah, this problem is extremely common. V6 hot ends. The problem is, there's, I don't see a gap between the, the, the heater block and the, and the nozzle. And you pre pretty much want like a one millimeter gap, because that way you know you have your nozzle locked to your heater brake. Um, All right, so see, there's like a little gap between. As you can see, there's a, little, there's a gap between the heater block and the nozzle. And it's locked down. Well, that way I know it's actually locked to the heater brake. Um, yeah, the tube's probably in the way. See the little gap? Right there. Alright, so I'm gonna get, try to get some more stuff off here. And then I'll put a sock on it. One of my. Alright, so I got it back together. One thing I noticed is that the sensor is triggered, but that must be it means it's normally closed. So if it was normally open, it would actually, the light would be off. And when you probe, the light would come on. So I'm guessing that's normally closed. Doing a bed calibration just because I, I moved the sensor height. I'm about to change the Z offset too. So make sure that didn't hit. I'm gonna do the Z offset. Right, so I got going through a test print. And I'll come back, see if it works. Alright, there it is. Test print done. Back in business. No leaks, looking good. I know, I, I kind of seem like a, a hater of Prusa stuff, but really they actually make a pretty good printer. It's just, their extruder systems can be kind of frustrating. So, um, all right, cool, another 3D printer fixed.